So the girl boss and her entourage are returning from the Art of the Deal Thai style. Everything go okay? Yes. Yeah? I'm cool. I'm happy now. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I came here to shoot this part of the video for more than one reason, but I knew I would find a quiet spot here, or at least I suspected I would, and quiet is something that's hard to find in Thailand, certainly in Bangkok where I live or any big city. Quiet is just something that, you know, you can't find. But in Thailand, it, it, it's, it, noise is particularly pervasive. But I knew this part of the world, this very isolated part of northern Thailand, up near the Mekong River, bordering with Laos, here in this countryside, I've been here before, and I knew you can find quiet. So I came here, and as I was setting up my camera to shoot this video, I heard something off in the distance. And at first I thought it might be machinery, but it wasn't. It didn't sound like that. And then I thought maybe a river rapids, but there are no rivers back that way. And what I realized is a passing rainstorm that had cooled it down and made it smell kind of nice was off in the distance, and it was falling on, on, on those hills behind me. And you could actually hear the rain falling. <laughs> That's something I had never experienced before. Well, I'm a city boy and all that, but to hear rain falling off in the distance was a, a new auditory experience for me. In 1973, Bulkow's father came into this region here. Uh, it's called Samhai, is the, the, the village that's nearby. And uh, he came in here on foot because the only thing that existed back then in terms of roads were, were dirt pathways. They were large enough to accommodate maybe a jeep, but uh, it was mostly ox carts and people on foot. Bukow's dad had an elephant and an ox, and he came in here for a very specific purpose. He was looking for an isolated place. You see, Bukow's dad made guns and grew marijuana, which is perfectly legal these days, but back then it surely wasn't, not in the early 70s. And um, that's how he made his start here. Now, here's, here's a guy that I wish I had met. He passed away before I met his daughter, but he was an interesting character. He had at least four wives. Every time that I come up here to this region and talk with Boo's tribe of people here. She has a huge family and other people that, that, that belong to her group of, uh, of Thai folks here. They, they were tribal up into the 80s here. And um, when Thailand came in and chased out the communists and started building roads and stuff like that. But prior to that, there was this kind of a tribal region. The people here identify with, with, with the Lao people, Laos. And um, they have the tribal customs that came from, from this ancient region. And uh, Bua Kao, who's 41 years old, told me that when she was a young girl, like 11, 12 years old, that the presence of an automobile, would be a Jeep, in, in, in near her home was like a big deal to them. It was like, it was like an event that the kids would want to go out and see. That's how isolated this region was. And Bua Kao's dad picked that for that very reason. He was doing some illegal stuff. He made guns. He had, a, he had a, a posse of people that reported to him and worked for him. And as far as I can determine from my conversations with Bukow, he made rifles that were usable. And who were his customers? Anybody, but one of his biggest customers were the factions of communists that were still in this region. Anybody old enough to remember the Vietnam War knows that there were communist tribes and groups of people around this region, and they were pretty much eliminated by the French, the Americans, and the Thais themselves uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty effectively, except here in Loi province. If you look at a map of Thailand and see where all the airports are, all the old airports, what they were, they were old U.S. air bases that used to do all kinds of missions off into Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. And uh, Lui didn't have one of them. They have an airport now, but back then they didn't. And uh, there, there were other uh, services and, and uh, 
governmental support things that didn't exist here in Lowy, and the communists, the, the remnants of those communist groups, kind of gathered here in Lowy province. And Buchhaus' dad would sell guns to them. They were his biggest customer. Now, I asked if he was a communist and his daughters, the f six daughters that I know, when I asked that question, all of them were present in, in unison. They went, no! Apparently that was something that they wished to deny emphatically. <laughs> We found this temple today. It's the first time Buakau and her sisters have been here. And we explored that big white temple under construction, met the construction people who are really amazing craftsmen. And the first thing Buakau wanted to do was go home and get her children and bring them back here. You gotta remember, her children are young adults. They're not babies. You know, it's just a very meaningful thing for them. And uh, it's really rather pleasant, actually. Well, in the early 80s, in comes the Thai government, starts running all the commies out of town. And, uh, you know, that at first looked like a bad day. They also started uh, building roads. You know, once they chased the commies out, they had to win the hearts and minds, is the phrase that they say these days. They had to win the hearts and minds, so they started building roads and power grids and schools and things like that to win over the hearts and minds of the local people that lived here. And, uh, and Boo's dad had a shift, so he shifted into real farming, which is what his family does now. Uh, a bull cow is kind of the, you know, kind of the boss. She's the girl boss of what remains of this clan. She has five uh, siblings, direct siblings, and another four or five half-siblings. Turns out that her dad was a polygamist. He had at least four wives. I learn something new every time I come up here because I'm learning the language. And now when they're talking and they're getting a little drunk and laughing and giggling and telling stories of the old days, I start to, uh, I, I start to understand some of the things that they're saying and I'll be, hey, back up to that. I want to hear more about that. So they've admitted to uh, three extra wives. There may be more. Who uh, has a bunch of half siblings? They get along quite nice, and they're spread around Thailand. They're all doing well, and they're all doing well because of this this man who, I, like I said, I wish I had met. He was a real wheel of dealer. Okay, and they would make guns. Yes. For the communists. Yes. Okay. Right. And your father also grew ganja. Yes. Marijuana. Why? I thought you said your father grew. My 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 father not any but. Oh, yeah, he grew it. Yeah, he made it grow. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thai. Pon who kai gan cha. Gan cha. Yes. Pon who pu gan cha kai. Nu lu di. And pu gan cha. And before gan cha na. Polit er. A la kai wala na. Ami no lai. Shime ha. Polit and ami no lai gan cha. Because my pit good my. But can make money. Big money for my father. My father have need, uh, in mountain have uh, farm. Gancha. Gancha. Yeah, okay. Tham. Many, many years. Yeah, yeah. Tham nan ma. Made, made good money? Yes, really good money. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, pot is legal to sell now, so that's not something that to hide in the mountains for anymore. But, you know, here's a, a, the, the tale of a, of, of, I don't know, if it was a seagoing guy, you would have called him a pirate. He was, he was, he was a wheeler dealer. He, he knew how to shoot angles to make money and support his gigantic family, who are still kind of the village leaders of this region today, with uh, unofficially Boo sitting at the top of him. She is here today. The, the, her reason today for coming is to close a deal on 40 rye of, uh, of property. Uh, R-A-I, you could go to Wikipedia and figure out what that is, your, your homeland measurements. But here, it's, it's, uh, it's I guess, about a half acre in American property, and uh, a little bit more than that. And, and she's selling uh, 40 rye of property to finance and complete the construction of this home that she started construction on a little over a year ago. And that's the property that I'm standing on. This woman is a very impressive business person. She has three of her own children and a niece that live with us that uh, we consider ours as well. So these four children live with us in Bangkok. They're city kids. They don't like it up here. <laughs> it's a, they don't like the mosquitoes and all the other country things that are prominent here.
cool cow sees this 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 home as a, a place for me to retire and spend my final years, and I probably will. <laughs> Why not? Uh, the uh, it's gonna be a nice place when it's done. And like I said, she's here today to uh, to sell some some land to, to to finance the completion of this place, and uh, and yeah, so uh, girl boss bull cow. That's who I kind of uh, bumped into way back when, when I uh, needed somebody to run my yoga studio. <laughs> probably where I'll spend my final year. <laughs> Me and girl boss at Buakow. So, okay. Long video this time. Good to see you.